In today's lesson, we're going to talk more about our identity. We're also going to read a story called A Big Mooncake for Little Fry. If you think back on our first lesson, we read the book The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson. And the question that I asked was, what makes you unique? Some of you completed a journal activity you were asked to draw a picture of you. In the next activity that many of you did, you were asked the question, who am I? And asked to write down adjectives that describe you. Last week, although we did have some technology challenges, we did listen to the read aloud called Alma, and how she got her name. How did you get your name? And what's the meaning of your name? Some of you did this activity related to that story. You were asked to ask a parent or another adult, how did you get your name? And what does my name mean? Today we're going to read A Big Mooncake, Little Star by Grace Lynn. In an interview with the author Grace Lynn, she explains that the story grew out of her family's love of mooncakes and the moon, and also from not seeing her Chinese identity represented in American museums and books. A mooncake is a traditional Chinese dessert celebrated during the annual Chinese Mid-Autumn Festival. The festival is about celebrating the lunar cycles, celebrating the moon. Mooncakes are offered between friends and family during gatherings. Grace Lynn wrote a story that related to her own family's culture. In order for us to answer that big question that I asked a couple of weeks ago, who am I? It's really important that we understand where we came from. When we think of family, we may think of our parent or parents, caregivers, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and many of us consider longtime friends to be like family as well. Have you ever heard of the word genogram? Gene? A gram. We're going to create a genogram, which is a map of our family ancestry. So get out your SEL journal, turn to page four, which should be the next blank page, and near the bottom center of the page, draw a circle about the size of a quarter. Can you guess what this circle might represent? This circle at the bottom of the page represents you. So write your name below the circle. Next, think about your parents or the people who care for you. About four lines up from your circle, Draw circles that represent your parents or the people who take care of you. If you have one parent, just draw one circle. If you have two, draw two circles. And if you have three or more, draw three or more. Families can look different. Some people have one parent, two parents, three parents or more. Some people have a mom and a dad, two moms, two dads, two moms and a dad, and step parents. Some of us are adopted, while others may be raised by grandparents, aunts, uncles, or other family friends or family members. Next, write the names of your parents below their circle. If you want, you can write their ages, too. Next, draw a T-shape connecting you to your parent, parents, or caregivers. 
Do you have any brothers or sisters? If you have any brothers or sisters, draw circles that represent each sibling next to your circle. Next, we're going to draw circles that represent our grandparents. Do you know about your grandparents? Ask your parents about their parents. Draw a circle to represent each of your grandparents. We talked about the meaning of names last week, but for this activity, consider how you address different members of your family. How do you address different members of your family? Consider nicknames and cultural names. Feel free to add little family members, significant family friends, and color it in. You may choose to add great grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins if you can fit them. And if you have a special pet like a cat, dog, lizard, guinea pig, or a different type of pet, feel free to draw in significant people and pets as well. Thank you for listening.